U.S. Rep. John Conyers Jr. should be accorded due process as well as his accusers since all are equal before the law, Thompson writes, photo, Robin Buxton slash the Detroit News, by photo. We are a nation of due process. We are a nation of laws. We are a nation where everyone is innocent until proven guilty in a court of competent jurisdiction. We are not a nation where people who are accused of wrongdoing are publicly shamed and transported to the guillotine before the evidence is entered. That is one of the crowning jewels of our democracy. That is what has made this two-century-old republic a lasting testament to the power of a constitutional democracy. And the last time I checked, U.S. Rep. John Conyers Jr. has not been proven guilty of anything even though the sexual allegations against him sound damning and involve a questionable settlement that is driving much of the outrage against him. Attorney, Conyers not going to be forced out of office. Conyers should be accorded due process as well as his accusers since all are equal before the law. That process has already started in the form of the congressional ethics investigation that should be allowed to fairly and independently run its full course without fear or favor. Until the ethics investigation is completed and the panel submits its report based on the preponderance of the evidence, Detroiters should be the ones to determine the fate of the man who has been representing them in Congress for half a century. The people in Michigan's 13th district who elected Conyers should have the power to vote him out of Congress. That is why the Founding Fathers call it the House of Representatives, because members of Congress are supposed to take their orders from the consent of the governed. And in this case, Detroiters should make that call. Yes, sexual abuse is inexcusable and shouldn't be condoned. As indicated in a previous column, the sexual assault accusations sweeping the nation are not a war on men. They should be taken seriously regardless of who the accused is because women should not have to accept sexual abuse as an inevitable route to building careers in public service. But to get to the bottom of the truth in the Conyers saga would require us not jumping to conclusions or making hasty calls for his resignation. It also requires not erecting a second cross and giving in to the cry of, crucify him. A long-standing campaign to remove Conyers from office reignited by the present allegations has kicked into overdrive and seeks to undermine the process of the ethics investigation, and could possibly cloud the judgment of people who should otherwise safeguard the process. The disturbing accusations pose a serious threat not only to Conyers but to the legacy of black political leadership that he embodies and its profound commitment to civil rights. But such historical legacy should not override the demands of justice. The accused and the accuser both deserve a fair hearing before the Ethics Committee. The alleged actions of Conyers are being felt in the civil rights and labor community whose causes he has championed in Congress over the years. Based on what I'm hearing about Congressman Conyers, I would like to hear a little more.